Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, a newer version of Elementary has dropped, and I wanted to go ahead and have a little bit of a look at it. Now, Elementary, of course, is that one distro that uh, I've, uh, because I like speaking my mind without having to uh, worry about um, playing politics on one side or the other, I've had some positive things to say for it over the years, and I've had some negative things to say for it over the years. And honestly, that's why a lot of people like my content is because I'm not just, you know, kissing butt to one popular group or person or whatever else and, you know, and, and trying to get on everybody's best side because I think that that produces a, a disingenuous, uh, disingenuity. Is that a word? I don't know if that's a word. Uh, disingenuousness. How's that? That's uh, confirmedly a word. And uh, with that, I never really want to tell somebody which Linux distribution you should use or shouldn't use one way or the other. What I like to do is give you a lot of information by which you can draw your own conclusion. And hey, if you need to stay on Windows or Mac or something, eh, sure, as long as you know about it, as long as you are aware of the dangers and the concerns, then that's fine. I just want to show people that you can actually move over to Linux and get real work done. So let's have a look at what is in store for the new elementary, and then we will go ahead and jump on over into the machine. So uh, the one thing that I have always consistently really loved is the parental controls. They have renamed that from parental controls to screen times and limits, and they've also added the main user account uh, can now add their own uh, rules and regulations. Of course, you could go on into there and override it, but uh, hey, the point is still still true because that will help you with that degree of accountability. Maybe you want to say, hey, after five hours, I want to stop. You can now program it in as your main administrator user account as well. Awesome change. Uh, they have had uh, some other fixes to it that uh, address some other issues and concerns that they have had over the uh, over the years. They've also uh, greatly increased the snappiness of the application menu. This is something that I have noted in the past is that it can be a little bit slow, a little bit buggier at times. And so the fact that they are going to change this a little bit, that's actually really cool. I like that. That sounds good. So we'll go ahead and give that a test. And then the third major highlight they have is some similar um, search settings inside of the system settings, streamlining things like that. So uh, those are your major primary changes. Um, you can uh, change your desktop settings a little bit easier from there. They've made it a little bit easier to find inside there. And then they've kind of gone through and looked at just some of the, the other basics, changes, and settings. You can read the rest of the article there, which I will link down below for all of the other settings and changes. But with that, let's go ahead and have a look at what the distribution is actually going to look like when we get her set up. Now, with this, um, it is based on Ubuntu, of course, and I believe this is based on Ubuntu 20.04, and it's going to have the same installer that Ubuntu has, very easy to install, so we're not going to step through that. You can encrypt the whole disk, you can install or not install updates and or third-party repositories when you are doing the update, and then once everything is set up and going, you're all set to go. So here we are, we land on our login screen, which is very nice, stylish, modern, and elegant. Uh, very nice uh, look here. So let's go ahead and, and do that. I'm not sure if I had an alternative username, I'm guessing maybe I'd have the choice to change. I don't see the ability to change my username there or anything. Um, and they are, of course, still displaying our username, whether or not that's important for you or not. Uh, that's up to you. Now, when we first land on the desktop, it is a very nice uh, desktop. We have a complete transparent panel up at the top. Our right-click, left-click buttons don't do anything on the desktop. So you can't even right-click the desktop to change the wallpaper. Everything has to be done inside of the settings panel. We do have a, uh, a task panel up here. We can lock, shut down, suspend. Here's our notifications. We can turn on do not disturb right from the notifications. We can see what the updates are. We can clear all notifications and we can go in and pull up notification settings. You can do, turn off or turn on notification center, bubbles and sounds for individual applications. So very good, uh, very good settings, very good features. And that uh, brings it up to being very modern. 
Here's our network settings. So in here, if you wanted to add a VPN, you can go ahead and create a new VPN setting there. This is wired. I don't have wireless on this computer, uh, but if I did, presumably we would see the ability to add a wireless network to that as well. Here's our volume settings. Um, it, of course, is completely integrated with the music app, which is not currently playing anything. So if I had anything playing, then I would be able to see uh, something from inside of there. Sound settings, we can define our inputs or our outputs from a variety of different choices. So those are very good and easy to use. Now, one of the things that they said is that the applications menu is a little bit snappier here. So this is kind of your, your default. And here is your uh, list view based on the type of applications that we have. So if I wanted to search for something, yes, this is definitely a lot snappier than it has been in the past. Very, very well improved. Uh, very excellent here. Uh, here is, we have our masking, uh, multitasking view, Epiphany web browser, our mail application, calendar music. So there's really the only software that is installed is going to be your elementary based software uh, that is all their curated stuff. Now for testing the theming, I added GIMP, I added FileZilla, and I added VLC just so I can make sure that uh, different applications of different bases uh, will have similar theming. One of the things that we still have, the video is always a dark theme, the music is always a light theme, and I don't know of a way that you can change things. So some things are light, some things are dark themed. So we have a little bit of inconsistency in the system as far as your basic theming. Uh, pulling in a non-system application, here is VLC. So our window borders all look good. These guys here, they do match uh, most of the rest of the system, I think. Let's have a look at what this looks like on a list. So, uh, not really. Uh, these guys are certainly gray. We have blue uh, defaults over here. So, it doesn't appear that the, uh, the theming is quite as consistent on a non-curated app. So, of course, oh, not mail. I want to go with FileZilla. So here's FileZilla. Again, at least all of the theming is fairly consistent. Even this, let me pull VLC back up again. Just wanna have a look at what our menus. Even these actually, our menus are, are quite a bit different. You can see this is more of a solid blue. FileZilla, we go with more of a skeuomorphic blue. You can kind of see the differences on that. And then the last one I pulled in was GIMP. So still pulling in GIMP 2.8, and here is the more skeuomorphic menus. Although with GIMP, uh, I believe it's in preferences in this version, you can change your, your system theming. They only have a couple th system theming here. Uh, they actually have quite a bit more if you install GIMP 2.10. Um, unfortunately, on elementary, you're going to have a problem doing that. Uh, it's doable. It's just they've kind of disabled the ability to add your repos and dev packages and things like that. And that's going to what's going to bring us into more of our negatives, some of the things that I really don't like about it. And that is they're kind of like do it our way or don't do it at all. And my concern that I've brought up in probably the, the last video I did on elementary because I don't cover it a lot is I have deep concerns, particularly from a new user standpoint of going into the application store here. And then what you'll find is some of the most common applications, the most known applications will give you a scary warning that the people who have criticized that video said, oh, well, it's, you know, this is just indicating what's curated or not. We're talking about a distribution from Ubuntu, which, like it or not, controversy or not, is a well-respected distribution, okay? And when you're pulling that as your base and then providing the user with this uh, software center. And then if I wanted any, any office application at all. So if I go with LibreOffice, which is an extremely trustworthy, extremely well-known and an application coming from the repositories, the curated repositories from Ubuntu, we still get this warning. It's not curated by the elementary team has not reviewed, been reviewed for security, privacy, or system integration. Okay. If you cannot even support the most well-known office application 
inside the Linux community, this to me is what I consider is a very, very, very bad choice. Sure, I can turn this off and not worry about it, but a brand new user who doesn't know what a package is, doesn't know what curated is, and is being told, hey, install Linux, and you don't even need to go on the internet and download things. You just need to go to the software center, download stuff, and then you get this prompt here like, eh, I don't know about that. Are there any off other office suites? I don't know. Is WPS on this thing? No. Um, open Office Is open office on this thing? Uh, there's still LibreOffice. I don't know if I... Did I do open office? Um, there's... There's your, um, this is like the um, GNU version of your spreadsheets. Oh, we can't do that one either. Now, yes, you can install it. If you're new to Linux, ignore that warning. Uh, because this is, this is software that's, it may not be curated by the elementary team, but it's curated by the Ubuntu team. If you don't trust the Ubuntu team, don't use it as your distribution to base it on. That, to me, is a huge huge downside. Um, enough of that though. Let's go ahead and look at the system settings uh, because there's some changes to that. So screen time and limits. Um, so here you can actually turn on, I think you can, oh, hold on, I need to unlock it first. Okay, so now we can turn on screen time and limits so we can start and we can, we can start and stop, well, maybe, did our system just crash? Hmm. Well, I got the black screen of death. Okay. Well, apparently turning on um, that froze my system out. Hmm. Let me go ahead and get this restarted, then we'll come back. All right, so there we are. Um, system setting locked us out when we uh, turn that on. I think what happened, this is possibly a bug in the new feature where the administrator can... Uh, the administrator can come on and log himself on, is when you first turn this on... This is what I think happened. When you first turn this on, it set the time as the exact time period. And so as soon as I turned it on, I think it locked me out of the system. And so I was able to get back on, though, and then we were able to just kind of boot back on. But I think there might be a little bit of a bug just in when you turn it on. It'll just kind of automatically turn on to whenever you booted up this tool. And then it's going to lock you out. I think that's what happens. So you can come on in here if you have that issue. Just shut the computer down, turn it back on, and just go ahead and change this. We have a notification over here that we have 13 hours left. Um, one of the other things here that is concerning me a little bit is uh, while I was resetting this, I wanted to experiment with uh, internet blocking because you can prevent elementary from visiting certain websites. So I added Google and I added Start Page as a test. So if we load up Epiphany... If we go to startpage.com, it loads. It should be on my block list. Uh, likewise, Google, and I thought maybe it was not blocking this out because I didn't have the HTTPS in front of it. Uh, we have one with the www, one without. Um, so apparently whatever is in here is not actually blocking any account. It even says here, add a URL to block. Example, google.com. Prevent it from visiting these websites. Apparently I still can go there. I can still go to startpage.com. So there's something about the filtration that is not working. And I have rebooted the system since this. And so it's not a reboot issue. So something about this is not working. I don't know if it's because it's an administrative account. Maybe that function is just not working yet. Maybe it just is a shadow. It works in the GUI, but it doesn't actually function. Um, let's go ahead and see if, uh, uh, let's see, access these apps with admin permissions. We're going to close that out. Let's see if I can actually access the calculator now. Aha, I cannot access the calculator. So that's a good sign. So it does look, appear as though the blocking is being prevented, uh, blocking the applications, but blocking websites does not appear to be working. Um, let's go ahead and give it a try now that I have the system shut down though. So yeah, Google still at works just fine. Let's try with start page. 
So start page works just fine. So URL blocking of the system is not actually doing anything. So that aspect of it is not working. All right, let's have a look at the other new feature is uh, desktops, of course, you know, various wallpapers. Here's your appearance. Do you want win window animations? Do you want transparency in the panel? Uh, I think it looks so much more elegant with it. And then we can change our text size around if we want. So we have a couple options on text size. As far as our dock, we can go with smaller, uh, medium, or large, and then we can choose uh, the hiding options as well. And we can set up various hot corners in the system if you want hot corners. So that is, uh, that's actually good that we have those. We do have a few online accounts. Um, you can do your email, fast mail, last FM. That appears to be all of the online accounts that we have available to us. And really not much else inside of this. So it's extremely limited on what you can do with it. And um, you can see that there's inside here, there's, there's no way to change around your theming. Um, so if you wanted to change your theming around, you're going to be doing something hard in the configuration files to do that. You don't have the ability to choose accent colors or anything like that. So that's been one of the downsides of the elementary, uh, project is you pretty much have to do things exactly the way they want you to do things. And there's really not a lot of in between. So what's our overall analysis of elementary OS? Well, first and foremost, Pantheon is becoming mature in this. And I start to see the maturity of it. And it's becoming a very nice, very snappy, very flashy desktop for those that are interested in it. It's not my personal forte, but it definitely is coming along quite well, particularly if you are used to a Mac type interface or, hey, maybe you're even installing this on a Mac computer. Uh, it already has the function keys for you already. Um, one of the things is they try and say they're not trying to copy Apple, but even in their list of shortcut keys, they give you the uh, the uh, command button, which is not something you find on any keyboard except an Apple. So yeah, keep telling me that. Um, their parental controls do seem to be having some issues, at least for the administrative account for now. Um, hopefully the that and the locking me out issue were just little bugs that will be fixed. Uh, before too long. And again, I am deeply concerned about their handling of well-known applications in their app store. Uh, to me, that is a huge deal breaker for me. Everything else though is running very well. The theming is good, albeit it's not super consistent in that some of the theming uh, applications of their own applications. We're not talking the extra things you install, your own applications. Some of them are light themed and some of them are dark themed and you can't really change between the theming one way or the other. As far as adding third party applications, because unless the only thing you do with your computer is get on the internet and check your email, you're going to have to install other applications. The theming on any other application is not particularly consistent uh, with the theming systems or with anything else. For me, that does not ever bother me. Uh, as long as it works and the menus are there, I don't really give a crap what they look like. But there are a lot of people that go, oh, the theming's not consistent throughout. Well, if that's you, elementary is probably gonna give you more of a headache than anything else. Uh, it is a very simple, very streamlined system, and I'm going to say very secure because you can't even add a lot of other software that you might be able to add using other means in many other Linux distributions. That is going to come up in the form of a negative if you happen to need to do that. Uh, you're going to, uh, yes, you can make it work. Hey, I've taken elementary and put desktop icons on it before. It's very possible to do. Um, it's just to what degree do you want to tinker around with the system just to get this desktop working, whereas a KDE, a Plasma, a GNOME can do other things with a little bit more simplicity. So with that, elementary itself, I'm not saying it's a bad distribution. I'm not saying it's an amazing distribution. I'm going to take, take my stance right in the middle as I've always taken my stance right in the middle. Hey, it's an okay distribution. If it's for you, awesome. Use it. It does work well. If it's not your cup of tea, hey, it's not my cup of tea either. We can still be friends and agree that it's a neat desktop. I love what they're doing. Uh, it's just not for me. So that's my take on the new version of Elementary. Let me know your takes in the comments down below.